The bone of the body is covered by a fur coat, and for years we used to hunt them for that fur. We hunted and killed California sea lions for many years, mainly for their fur, but also for their blubber, which we turned into oil. I'm pleased to say we stopped hunting them a long time ago, and they're now protected. So they are now doing fairly well. If we continue to hunt them, there's every chance they could be extinct by now. But I'm pleased to say that's not the case. There's an estimated population of about 350,000. So they're not classed as endangered, not classed as threatened. And that's why we've got an all-male group here. If they were endangered or threatened, we'd promote breeding here at the zoo. But at the moment, we've taken the decision not to breed them. Mainly because they're not endangered, but the other reason is they breed really successfully. So you can end up overrun with baby sea lions if you're not careful. Uh, so at the moment, we've just got three males here. Our little male, Matteo, he was on stage in the first show at 12 o'clock, now having a well-earned break in the corner pool. They all get a chance to do that throughout the course of the day, have a break on their own, away from the group to relax, and that's Matteo over there. Merlin, it's about to show you his catching skills. We've got five hoops, he's going to try and catch all five over his long neck. And he is pretty good at this, but when we first practiced this with him, the hoops would bounce off his nose, they'd end up on the floor, in the pool. He is now good at catching them over that long neck like that. For some reason, he always has to look over his shoulder just to check his caught in. I don't know why, because they're just going over his head. He just likes to have a little look every time, just to check his caught the hoop. And he can catch well because he's got binocular eyesight. Two eyes facing forward, just like you and me, so he can judge distance and speed. Give him a clap, nice clap. <laughs> now learning to do that kept him occupied for quite some time. Like I said at first, there was hoops going everywhere, but now very good at catching hoops like that. However, we're going to make him more of a challenge. We're going to flip the hoops. When we flip them, he's got to adjust his head at the last second to make the catch. And he might only get three out of five, but if he makes a mistake or gets something wrong, we don't punish him. That's no way to train an animal. If I was to punish him, he wouldn't trust me. And if you want to work closely with the animals like we do here, they've got to trust you, you've got to trust them. So the training's all about rewarding them for doing well, simple as that. But it's a lot to do with practice too. The more you practice these things, the more their skills improve. That was a brilliant catch. And practice makes perfect. Well done. Now in the wild, these animals have a lot to do just to survive. They've got to find, chase and catch fish, they've got to avoid predators, they've got to defend the territory, and that's just to survive. Finding fish is becoming more and more difficult. Because of overfishing, because of pollution, fish stocks are becoming reduced. That means these animals have to travel further to find the fish and squid they need. The further they have to travel, the more vulnerable they are to attack. They are preyed on by killer whales. And the first thing they do if they spot a killer whale is head for dry land. But if they're far out to sea and they race for the land, the chances are they're going to lose that race because killer whales can swim faster than sea lions can. But these animals have an amazing ability to twist and turn. They are incredibly flexible. And Merlin's going to show you this now. You wait in the corner. When I give him the signal, he's going to do a backward somersault or a backflip. Whatever you call it, it's a good demonstration of how fast and how flexible he is. Watch him out here in front of me. Don't blink or you'll miss it. Are you ready? Go! Three, two, one! What a somersault! Looping through the air. In the wild, these animals have a very short lifespan. Well, many of them do. They can live to 15, they can sometimes reach the age of 20. But it's estimated as little as 1% of the population reaches the age of 20. Uh, sadly, 40 to 60% of them don't reach the age of 1. Uh, they don't, don't make it through the early months. And that's because of predators, because of pollution, because of lack of food. Um, there is a high mortality rate in the wild, sadly. Here in a zoo, obviously, it's very different. If we were to breed them, uh, the infant mortality rate is incredibly low, maybe because there aren't any predators here. We have great effects if we treat them when they get ill. And this extends the life expectancy. Um, the uh, maximum lifespan, as we said, in the wild, 15 to 20. In a zoo, it's 25 to 30. But basically, in the wild, 25 is unheard of. 15 is considered very, very old. In a zoo like this, they can easily live to 18. As we said, we've got Marvin Hughes, 22. 
where he sadly lost our big alpha male last year in September. He was called Clyde. He passed away at the age of 27. Now, uh, Merlin's going to show you a bit of balancing. Yeah. This involves him using these things here around his nose, his whiskers. The Latin name for the whiskers is Vibrissi. As the name suggests, they are sensitive to vibration. Each one has a strong nerve at the base, which makes them more sensitive in our fingertips. He's learned to use his whiskers to reveal which way this ball is moving, and that's when he can keep it on top of his nose, like that. Now, uh, it took a long time for him to learn how to do this. He kept him occupied for a couple of years practicing balancing. And after a couple of years, he started to get hang of it. But at first, he'd hold the ball for just a second or two, then three seconds, four seconds, and we just rewarded him for doing that. Eventually, he got the hang of using the whiskers. At first he tried watching the ball, he's not watching the ball now, he could do this with his eyes shut. He is relying solely on his whiskers to feel which way the ball's moving. And it's a clever skill. People often say to me it's a circus trick, it's a magic trick. It's not a trick, there's no trickery involved. I get asked questions like, do you put weights in the ball? No. Are there strings attached to it? No. A little kid asked me last week, do you put soup with it? No, it's all to do with his whiskers. Now here in the zoo, they don't really use their whiskers for anything else. They use them in a very clever way in the wild. They use them to find fish. When it's too dark or murky to see, they can still find food. Because when a fish swims, it moves its tail from side to side. This creates little waves in the water. The whiskers can detect these wave patterns, and if they follow them, they leave them to the fish. Here, we're not allowed to feed the live fish. We're not allowed to do that. All the fish we feed them is just be feed frosted. Which means here, this is one of the only ways we can get them using those whiskers. Well done, Merlin. Good luck.
his massive body, 20 stone of sea line, he's going to jump all the way up to that pink ball and touch it with his nose. For at least get a whisk to him. Now that is a big jump, he is a big sea lion, he's going to land in a big pool. Have you got that on the front row? Yeah. Yes. You guys are safe over there, you will land. Because the water goes down in that direction. We have to warn you, you can't get a bit wet over there, guys. And that was your warning. Right, are you feeling confident, darling? Are you? Yeah, you don't seem to show sure. Give it your best shot. If he misses, just give him a clap anyway. If he hits it, I want a big cheer. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Here he comes like a rocket into the air. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you all have a fantastic time here at Blue Bye bye. Thank you all.